Hey friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and I have a lesson today coming at you for part of Stairway to Heaven, the Led Zeppelin classic, right? So this lesson is going to be focused just on this little interlude section. It happens about two minutes into the song. Um, it has the oh and it makes me wonder vocals that are on top of it. Um, this is a, a fantastic little interlude. It uses only a few chords that are based off, you know, common A minor and D shapes. Then you have a few triads up here, which might, you know, be tricky if you've never learned that sort of thing before. But um, I'll show you how to get over that hump. It's not as difficult as you think. And you combine them together and you have this like very just beautiful little uh, sequence that can be fun. You know, even if you don't play the beginning part of the song and you don't play what's after, this can be a fun little rewarding thing to learn and just practice and have fun with as a guitarist. So I'm going to teach it to you. As always, check out my website, playsongnotes.com to get the um, notes and tabs. I have a nice handwritten PDF. It's just for this one section. You can learn it. You can focus it on it. It's a great companion to this video. Okay, so um, let's get into this real quick now. Um, and we're going to look at first at the chord shapes we're going to need. I approach the chords like this. We're going to have two chunks here. You know, on the left, you have this sort of A minor seven. There's actually two different voicings of that. Our left pinky is going to be on and off. I'll, I'll focus on that in a second. We have uh, two variations of D. We'll have a D sus4 and a regular D. Okay? And then we're going to get over to these triads, right? We have an E minor and a D and a C. And just really three of them. The E minor, the D, and the C, right? Uh, so first, let's look at these left ones, okay? So the A minor 7. There's two of them you're going to need to know. So I'll start this off by teaching you a regular A minor. Okay, it's the thinnest five strings, open fifth string, second fret, second fret, first fret, open, right? Zero, two, two, one, zero. That's an A minor if you're going from the fifth string towards the thinnest first string, right? Now, what makes it an A minor seven is if we add the seventh uh, tone of the A minor scale, which is G. Now, there's two Gs uh, that we're going to basically be adding here. One of them is just we're adding it by virtue of taking off our index finger off the third string, so... So we lift up our ring finger there on that third string. So we'll have, um, you know, open second, open first, open. That is an A minor seven because that G is ringing, right? But the second A minor seven we're gonna wanna know is by taking our pinky and adding it to this third fret of the high E string, or the, the low E, yeah, the, the thinnest string, right? Third fret. And we're gonna do this while we're doing that um, you know our middle finger and our index finger there on the uh, on the third and on the fourth and uh, second strings. So get used to going between these two shapes, right? The A minor seven without the high E string being um, fretted, and then the one with the third fret on the high E string. It's good to practice just by going on and off. get tricky to do this, especially if your pinky is not used to it, but um, give it some practice. Come back to it, you know, a couple times throughout the day and a couple days in a row, and your fingers will sort of get, get over that hump there, right? Now, keep your pinky there because it's actually going to need to stay there um, when we transition to this D sus4 here. So the D sus4 is basically a D chord, right? Fin then it's four strings, oh, open, second, third, second, and then our pinky by going on the uh, third fret of the thinnest string, it makes it a D sus4. But this is a good little opportunity to practice these four chords um, in the sort of order by going from the A minor to the A minor seven. Keep your pinky there, go to the D sus4, and then go back to the D. And then start over at the A minor seven, add the pinky, go to the D sus4, I find that noticing that your left pinky is going to be um, a shared note that's played on two of these chords really makes it um, helpful to practice. And you can change the order of these chords too. I mean, you could um, you could go backwards. You can go from the D to the D sus4 to the A7 and then lift up your pinky, right? So find ways to mix it up so you're not just repeating the same thing over and over again, right? But maybe, you know, use these chords as your building blocks. But those are going to be the first chords we're going to have. Um, now, as far as them in the sequence, it's going to look like this. We're going to go from the 
We're gonna start off with our pinky down on that A minor seven, right? We're gonna do a down, down, up, down. And then we're gonna lift up the pinky and do one more down strum, okay? And these are approximated strums, right? Um, down, down, up, down, down, right? Down, down, up, down, down. This is the first measure, right? So. One more time. Then we're gonna to go to the D sus4 and just do a down strum on the D sus4 and then the D. And we'll add some filler strums, which I'll talk about in a second. So the first two measures, if you just look at strumming, and I, I recommend isolating the strumming and, and the chord transitions. It's gonna be down, down, up, down, 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 down. Okay, one more time. Down, down, up, down, 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 down. So. Okay, that, in that first part, I found the trickiest, trickiest part was, you know, if you start in that A minor seven, that's, you know, you get there, you start, you lift up your pinky, which is pretty, you know, easy. But then this transition to the D sus4 was the tricky thing for me because I, I, I don't really uh, recall doing that terribly often in the song. Usually you go to a D, but going straight to a D sus4, you have to do it kind of quick. That kind of took me a while to get used to. But uh, after that, you just take off your pinky again. So there's, there's two times where you're taking off your pinky in these first two measures, right? All right? Repeat that. And let me talk a bit about the, the strumming here. Um, I'm sure that, um, you know, in the Led Zeppelin version, there's a lot more subtle strumming going on that I'm not capturing here. I'm not really necessarily interested in capturing the exact brushes of the exact strings that, um, that they're playing. Because it's, uh, I think for your, just getting over the hump, it's important to feel the, the main pulses, right? So it's a down, down, up, down, 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 down. The thing is though, you can add in filler strums. And the way I think about um, approaching that is sort of get the rhythm, you know. So what I was doing there was sort of feeling the, the rhythm with my right hand, right? And kind of get that motion going. And then from there, From there, it's sort of bringing in the strums, you know, just light brushes on the string as you see fit. Now, if that's giving you trouble, um, just stick with the simple strums I have here. Down, down, up, down, 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 right? You can work out the exact nuance uh, separately. I, I wanna sort of make that point though. So um, that's basically the first half. And now the second half of this riff is gonna be, uh, it's gonna start off the exact same way. First two A minor seven chords. All right, exact same thing. Now we're gonna have these new triad shapes. So let's look at these. Um, the E minor, the D, and the C triads. So basically, the first of these is the E minor. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is um, index finger, seventh fret, first, first string. Middle finger is eighth fret on second string. And then um, ring finger is on the th um, ninth fret of the third string. So nine, eight, seven, if we count from the third string to the second string to the first string. Nine, eight, seven. Okay? Fingers are nice in a row right there. Now what's gonna happen is for the D, we're gonna slide this whole shape two frets closer to the top of the, the, the neck, and then we're gonna put our pinky down on the second string on the seventh fret. So we're gonna have seventh fret, seventh fret, fifth fret. So start off by just getting used to doing the E minor to the D. E minor to the D. Just the thinnest three strings. And note that our ring and our in, uh, index finger are basically staying in the same relative position to each other. They're two strings away and two frets away. Kind of like in chess, how the knight can move two squares in any direction and then left or right one or up or down one or whatever. 
kind of the same thing. Like think of it that way. These are the same um, same relative position to each other. Only difference between the E minor and the D is our pinky is going to go down on the D. If you wanted to, you could keep your middle finger down on that D because the pinky is going to intercept that note. Right? The good news is about the next chord, the C, it's the same exact thing as the D. It's just moved two frets even higher. So it's fifth, fifth, third. So C, D, E minor, right? E minor, D, C. And once you get those sort of comfortable, then practice going maybe up and down, like, you know, go down, then back up. And you could take it so like this too. I'm just going third, second, first, ooh, I messed up. Third, second, first string, third, second, first string, third, second, first string, third, second, first string. You want to get clean notes. Give your finger some break. This will sort of wreck your pinky if you're not, especially not used to these thinner strings up here um, at first. But give it time. Again, come back to it day after day a little bit um, and your hands will get used to it. Don't expect to learn it in just one or two hours of concerted effort if you're coming in totally cold to this sort of technique. So now that you know the chords, the basic idea is just to do that. Go from an E minor to a D to a C and back to a D. Okay, and down strums on each one. And we can add filler strums, which I'll talk about here. So that whole sequence would then be. Okay, a couple things here. One is it's okay if your fourth string is played or uh, when you're doing the E minor especially. It just works. Um, there, there's a there's a sort of open uh, droningness that it adds, and it adds a bit of fullness to the sound too. So don't 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 beat yourself up if you're accidentally playing the fourth string. The second thing in here is going from that A minor seven. This is a tough jump, right? You're going from an A minor seven with no pinky up to this E minor. So the trick to doing this um, is when you're ready for it, you basically want to practice going from this A minor to the E minor, right? A minor to the E minor, A minor, E minor, right? Because that jump you're going to have to do and keep your timing straight, right? So that whole sequence in the second half of this entire riff will be down, down, up, down, 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 okay? One more time. Down, down, up, down, 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 okay? Now, filler strums here, same deal. Feel free to sort of get that motion instilled in your strumming hand. And the strumming, the main strums I gave you are what you kind of want to accent. But the other ones, it's okay if your pick touches the string. So really slow. Let's just do the whole thing. You'll notice when you're doing the whole thing, another difficult jump is going from this last chord, which is the D triad, going from that to the A minor 7 with your pinky down. So practice that in isolation. Right? Because you're going to need to do that. So the whole thing slow. Filler strums. All right, now 
Now, to add the vocals over it, uh, I can't sing. I can't sing like um, like him, but basically, you know. Fantastically beautiful stuff from one of the greatest songs of all time, if not the greatest rock song of all time. Uh, but that's basically it. So, you know, I have other lessons for Stairway, uh, a couple for the intro before this, and then um, some for uh, some that are coming um, for the last part of the song. But uh, this one is one I wanted to share with you because this little interlude caught my ear. So check out the rest of my channel if you want to see my other stuff for this song. Thank you very much for watching. And again, remember, check out the website, playsongnotes.com. Uh, the PDF, it's written up. It's uh, very helpful for learning this part of the song if that's what you want to do uh, as a companion to this video. You can keep it forever. So um, thanks for watching. Tell a friend. Thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. Thanks to all of you who have been patient waiting for this lesson. It's been uh, years of people requesting it. And this song has been a bit of a mental... Um, I've had trouble approaching it because it's such a, like a, a sacred song to me. And um, I almost know it too well from a listening point of view that uh, it was hard to get in the mind space of, of approaching it as a guitarist because it's kind of unique in that regard, right? The, the, the rules about no stairway and everything. But with that said, uh, I'm going to leave you. Hope this was helpful. Share it with a friend and I'll see you around for the next one. Bye-bye.